can see here it's uh, about a 60% moon visible, beautiful clear sky, very frosty. Um, I'm just going to pan the camera around so you can see this lovely setting. There's some beautiful old oak trees. I'll just pan up. And you can see how much difference a bit of moonlight makes, but you can still really see the stars as well. And just as we're going right round into the glare of the moon now, you can see Orion right in the centre of the shot below the moon there. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to simulate how you get focus on the stars, which with a phone you're limited to touching the screen. On a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera like mine, the focus technique you need is to choose a bright star, like there's a lovely bright one just to the right of the tree there, and you manually focus and you'll use the zoom function on uh, through the viewfinder. There'll be a little button you can press that will zoom you in and you manually focus and get that little point of light as small as you can get it. And it's only in focus when it's the tiniest pinpoint of light. So I'll simulate that in a minute. So to get the focus, I'm going to choose that bright star that's in the middle of the frame now, just to the right of that tree, and I'm going to zoom in and I'm just manually focusing. See it's blurry and out of focus now. And I'm just going to make it as small as possible. And actually you'll also see a few of the smaller stars just become visible just when it's in focus and I think that's about it there. So that is now in focus and I'll stop video in a, in a sec and I'll just do a nice shot, in fact I'll, I'll move the camera around a little bit, do a nice shot of that tree with Orion next to it in a moment. Just a still shot. So here's the still shot um, and um, yeah, it's reasonably in focus, could be a smidge sharper if I was really fussy, but it's a, it was a real balance um, with the lens wide open at a wide aperture like that to keep the twigs of the tree in focus and the stars in focus, so it, it ended up being a balance. But you can see the church in the distance underneath that pointy out bottom branch there, and you can see Orion, and you can see... Uh, one of uh, the stars in Orion's belt, uh, well it's actually not a star, it's a nebula, it's the Orion Nebula and it's got a slightly fuzzy purple light to it and um, you know, if you focus in on that with a telescope with a tracking system uh, it's a beautiful structure and it's, it's a much photographed object in the night sky. And then um, this shot here I took last April at Hope Gap and it was a wonderful, um, I'd walked down there from Seaford. There is, there is a safe way down through the nature reserve if you park at the Seaford Head car park. We don't need to go near the cliffs at all. Um, and that particular night there was lovely low mist on the water. Um, quite a lot of light pollution from Eastbourne. So this gives you an idea where the Milky Way is in April. And um, you can just see the two bright stars in the bottom of the towards the bottom of the horizon in the middle there and one of them making a big patch of reflection on the water well that's Jupiter and the one below and to the left is Saturn and those, those were on their way to becoming the grand conjunction that we just had this last December but that gives you an idea of where the Milky Way is in April as it swings around to sort of July you're looking more due south but um, if Eastbourne improved their street lighting and controlled the light pollution from commercial premises, um, we would get some fantastic shots of the Milky Way over the Seven Sisters. Um, so we live in hope that um, the education about the importance of dark skies works and um, street lights are better shielded and better controlled um, and we can win back fantastic shots of the Milky Way and experience of the stars over the Seven Sisters would just be amazing.